Hey -o. welcome back to The Logic Professional, the YouTube series exploring the ins and outs of Apple's Logic Pro 10 recording software. Today we're going to be talking about using the Flex Editor for pitch correction and auto-tuning vocals. So if you're a producer with a vocal take you're not quite satisfied with, um, or if you're just exploring how to get that auto-tune sound here in Logic, you're in the right place. So, let's get started. We're going to be working with this vocal sample right here today. Uh, let me play that for you. It's a female singer. Pretty cool. Now that's a pretty tight singer. Uh, she probably doesn't need a lot of pitch correction, if any, but we'll use it just for the sake of using it. Uh, obviously, all these principles can be applied to any kind of vocal take. So the first thing you do is you select your audio track, and you can see it down here in the editor. I have it blown up quite a bit. Uh, then you turn on flex mode by clicking this button right here. It looks like a little DNA strand. Uh, we're going to turn on flex mode. And it defaults to uh, slicing, which is a temporal editor. And that's something we'll talk about in a different video. But for pitch editing, we want to go to this drop down here and select flex pitch right up here at the top. And what this will do is analyze the audio file and create essentially a MIDI grid, just like you would see on a virtual instrument, um, for your vocal part or for whatever audio file you've loaded into this. So you can see what notes being sung, like up here. It's an A sharp. Um, you can see the exact shape of the wave, uh, the pitch content of the waveform with this little line that runs through as well. So, um, of course, you can go in and individually edit each note if you'd like. I'd say for the most natural result, it's better to edit in groups. Um, so, we'll start with a softer pitch correction. If you have a singer that's just a little bit out of tune and you want to um, you know, just tighten it up a bit, you can select the phrase that doesn't sound good. So we'll just start with this first phrase here and maybe slide this over somewhere between like 10 and 30 percent. I wouldn't go any higher than that because then you'll start to generate those artifacts and auto-tune sounds. So now just the first pa phrase of this is a little bit pitch corrected. Let's listen again. Oh, 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 oh. So that's a, maybe that's a little tighter. Uh, it's, it's bringing the pitch closer to the exact note. Now if you get too close, you'll start to sound mechanical. So let me uh, let me show you what it's like if I take this whole thing and just lock all the notes into 100% pitch correction. So now you see the notes have shifted to ex their exact point on the MIDI grid, and it's gonna sound a little different. Oh, 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 oh. So now it's pitch perfect. Um, and it's got a few artifacts in it, but it doesn't have that auto-tune sound. So if you're looking for subtle pitch correction to improve on a recorded performance, stick with this. You can lower um, the percentage. You can dial it in. Uh, you can work with individual notes. Just watch out for artifacts. But if what you're actually looking for is that T-Pain style auto-tune sound, then the quickest way to do that is to uh, lock everything to 100% and then start adjusting the vibrato of the notes. So these six dots that surround each notes are six different parameters you can control for either groups of notes if you have them selected or individual notes as well, but we're going to operate on the whole group for now. So um, by flattening the vibrato, by taking the vibrato down to 0%, you take all the pitch fluctuation content out of the vocal. And what you end up with is a very robotic auto-tune sound. So check it out. Oh, 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 oh. See, it's very, oh, oh, very synthetic. Oh, 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 oh. And you can even, uh, once they're this flat, you can even just change the notes of the melody. And you can you can explore, you know. Not 
not the prettiest uh, thing in the world, but you get the idea. Uh, using this tool, you can take one vocal part and draw a whole new melody, or you can create that auto-tune sound, and you can manipulate and get very creative with this. So just a few other features of the Pitch Flex Editor. I'm going to undo a few things and take a step back to that more natural vocal. There we go. Um, for individual notes, you can also affect a few useful parameters. And this, this is good for spot editing. If there's just one little thing that doesn't sound right, definitely explore these options to see if you can fix it. Um, so let's take this note, for example. It's a little flat. So we'll take the fine, sorry, it's a little sharp. So we'll take the fine pitch, which is the center dot. We'll click on it and pull it down so that it's right in the center of the pitch. Now this one individual note should sound right on. And sometimes it doesn't, and it's, it's a little quirky, but uh, definitely trust your ear over the grid. Use the grid more as a guide. Uh, a few other things you can do are take the pitch drift on either side. Uh, pitch drift is uh, usually a singer, when he sings a note, he doesn't start out by hitting the note right on. You drift into it. You kind of bend quickly. It's subtle, and you might not hear it, but when a computer's analyzing it, you can see it. Uh, and sometimes the drift is a little too much, and it sounds out of tune. So if you want to change the pitch drift if he's bending up into the note like this note for the this lady right here you can just raise the pitch drift and it will only pull up the first part of the note and that's the same for the end as well uh, if the notes dipping down too fast or bending up into another note too fast you can fix that as well so we could pull up the pitch drift here um, another useful thing is the vibrato. Also, if a note just sounds a little too out there, you can sort of flatten it out and soften it um, with the vibrato to get it right where you want. And I'm just messing around right now, um, but you'll have to dial in. When you have a problem with your vocals, you will have to dial in and find the way to fix it. And usually, by working with these parameters, you can find that exact fix. Uh, a couple other things you can do. Um, you can change the volume of any individual note by manipulating the lower left-hand corner dot. That's the gain dot. So if one note's just a little too loud, see how this one's a little louder than, one, than the one after it, you can pull it down and maybe smooth out your sound. And this is a great thing to do before mixing and before compression. It, makes, it takes a lot of pressure off the compressor, and you can use it more creatively instead of uh, to fix things that don't sound right. Um, so definitely check that out. And then on the bottom right, you have a formant shift, which manipulates the formant of the note, like where the center point of the note is. So if you want it to be a little sharp or a little flat, you can mess with that as well. So. Oh, yeah, I got a little glitch there. Um, that's it. Um. Definitely use these tools creatively. Be careful with them. You don't want things to sound chopped up um, unless that's what you're going for. But everyone wants a nice, clean, tight vocal sound. And definitely one way to improve on almost any vocal take is to do just a little bit of pitch correction as well. So thank you guys so much for checking this out. Uh, again, this is the Logic Professional teaching you the ins and outs of Logic's, uh, Logic Pro 10, Apple's recording software. Uh, please remember to subscribe to this channel, uh, check out some of my other videos, and if you ever have any question at all, feel free to reach out to me directly, or just leave a comment below, and I'll try to make a video to help you out or get back to you. Um, yeah, thanks so much, everybody. You all have a great day.